ooh, très chic. This whole face is Lancome. I love Lancome. I have loved Lancome since the 90s. I don't see a lot of people talking about it. There's more competition now than ever, but Lancome is the long game. They're not going anywhere. And I absolutely still to this day love their mascaras. They're still some of the best mascaras on earth. I love the foundation and concealer. And you know me, I'm not a foundation and concealer person. I did, this whole look is Lancome. I love it. I love it. If I was in Paris right now, I would feel very chic going out at night in this without looking Kardashian or too American. I feel like I would blend in if I was in all black. I feel like I would blend in and possibly look Parisian. I'd have to do messier hair because my hair might look too coiffed. But this feels so elegant and so beautiful and I cannot wait to show you what I've used. So stay tuned. Hey, welcome back to my channel. I'm Michelle Spieler, number 25 year professional makeup artist. I come from the Hollywood industry. I now live on the East Coast. I'm relocating to Nashville. I just announced that on Wednesday night. My family and I are relocating to, um, I have hair in my mouth, Nashville, Tennessee in October. We are so excited. And if you could just say a prayer that my house sells. We are in escrow for a house in Nashville and it just fits my family better and I'll have more opportunities. And I really want to work outside of the home more. I love educating mature women on makeup techniques, but I do miss doing makeup in person. And there's really no opportunity in Charlotte. And I can't move to Wilmington to do TV and film. They do bring me out there to work on um, shows. I just did season one and two of Summer I Turned Pretty. Not the whole season, but they'd bring me out for episodes with tons and tons of people in it and big cast. So I, I enjoy TV and film, but I really miss doing beauty makeup on people other than myself. So Nashville is just such a great fit. We're so excited. If you are watching this right now, it is Saturday and I'm not sure what Saturday I'm posting this. I don't know if I'm posting it this Saturday, the day I travel to Hawaii to take my mom's ashes, or next Saturday, um, I think that's what the, maybe the 16th, I don't know, um, but I'm glad you're here, and I'm also the maker, uh, creator of Mature Makeup Masterclass. It's a series of 23 videos on mature technique, and you can always watch a quick video, you can always um, click on my Mature Makeup Masterclass link, and it takes you to a quick um, I don't know, maybe a two minute video of me explaining why every woman over 40 needs this and it's worth a watch. Okay. This is a lengthier video today. I'm going to do it in segments to make it easier to edit and also easier to upload and all of that. So today I am inspired by this beautiful palette called French Nude by Lancome. So this whole video today is Lancome. I love Lancome. I just love Lancome. I have to tell you, um, I'll put some Genifique on in a minute, but this is what we're in. We're doing a really beautiful French nude eye today. We're going to do a little bit more of a fall look. I've never tried their priming serum. I feel it's a lot like the Tatcha silk canvas. Um, so I will talk to you about Lancome as I put on some skincare. <sighs> I was always an advanced night repair person, okay? Used it ever since my 20s. I worked for Estee Lauder when I was in my mid-20s right out of college. And my mom loved advanced night repair. And then my sister also worked for Estee Lauder. And she left Estee Lauder after, I don't know, seven, eight years. And she went to work for Lancome. And when I tell you that my mom and I went bonkers for this Genifique. It's just, oh, it's just, you can see my reaction to it. I love it. It makes me feel like I just have smooth, silky baby skin. I love Genifique. So thank you, Lancome, for sending me that. Okay. I don't know if you've ever used their UV Expert. Um, I've only ever used it when they send me these tiny samples, but I love these samples and I will be taking quite a few of these to Hawaii. Now, I wouldn't wear this on the beach, but 
We have a couple days where we don't go to the beach and I can definitely wear that. When I go to the beach, I'm gonna be taking all of my favorites. Um, I'm super disappointed I didn't reorder this. I'm almost out. This is, um, this is largely, look at this, this is largely empty. And this comes from Australia, so you can't just Amazon Prime this. It takes about two weeks to get here. And I just have some, I just have trace amounts left in bowl. So I will be squeezing those out, taking those to Hawaii. And then I have really great SPFs from, you know, different brands, uh, Korean brands. And um, I don't know, I'm just, I really have to be careful because even when I don't tan my face, when you go into sand pool anything the light reflects up on you and even if you reapply every couple hours I noticed when I went to the beach in May all of my sunspots darkened and I did everything right I sat under an umbrella I always wore a giant sun hat that has the UPF material built into it I reapplied every 90 minutes to two hours my sunscreen still came back with darker sunspots and I was so frustrated Anyway, I have the worst hangnail. Okay, so I'm going to put on... I use cuticle oil two, three times a day, and I still get the worst hang hangnails you've ever seen. Okay, I'm going to use this. You, I, the reason I've been waiting is you, I don't want, you don't want to put SPF on right after that Genifique. You really want to wait. Oh. It's just so silky. I do have to run errands today. So I definitely need my SPF 50. This has a 50. Is this a 50? Yeah, it's a 50. Yeah. And it gives just a beautiful glow. I'm going to put it on my neck too. And in my hands, I'll do so. I'm going to wash my hands several times. So, okay. I'm gonna let that absorb in for a minute. And then we are gonna start this new priming serum. I don't know about this, so if you've ever tried their priming serum, please let me know about it in comments. But 24 hour hydrating solid smoothing primer. It has hyaluronic acid, niacinamide, and let's see. Um, it's for under your foundation, improves the look and feel of skin after two weeks. So it's one of those things that with continued use, your skin gets even better. Um, are there directions? I don't see directions, so I'm just going to assume you put on a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I don't see directions anywhere. Okay, so it comes with this little spatula and you lift the lid and there you go. It's in this cute little peach color. And I'm going to just scrape off the tiniest amount. I don't want too much. Like that's maybe the size of a pea. And I'm gonna warm it up in my hands. And I'm just going to put it where I have noticeable pores. So that's right through the T-zone. And then what's left over on my fingers, I'm going to take under the eye because, oh, I love a little primer. Oh, that feels so silky. You see that? Woo! I am not mad about that. Now, you know, I'm going to do eyes first because we don't want to make a mess with our foundation. I love this. Love that. That's their priming serum and the Genifique and the, the UV. So I am super prepped. My skin looks so glowy and I am excited to get started. Okay, we're gonna start with eyes. I don't know if I have a long comb brow pencil, so I'll tell you what, I'm just real quickly gonna do my brows off camera. I'll be right back. 
Okay, I just put my brows on real quick. I used the Kimiko pencil. I love Kimiko. They sent me this, um, but she is an Asian makeup artist, and so she created this teeny tiny little pencil lid that's real hard but draws because it's very pigmented, and I love her. I really love her brow. Um, I'm not going to put a gel on yet because we're still going to do foundation, but... Okay, so let's start with our French nude. And look, they even have a diagram of how to do it. Isn't that cute? I'm probably not going to do it that way, though. Um, I want to go in with their Edol eyeliner. And I'm going to do this first, okay? And... I'm going to do, I'm going to keep it kind of French, so it's not going to be too heavy of a look because I want to keep with the whole French theme. So I'm really just going to keep it right there on my outer eye. And then let's see, I might, oh, it's going to be hard without a close-up mirror. I might take just a little bit. Wow. Did I just find my new favorite brush pen? I've always loved Stila. This is very pretty, and I'm gonna tell you what, it's kind of a soft black. It's it's dark, look, from here you can see it's nice and dark, but it's not so inky that you're super aware of it. Okay, so I'm starting about where my pupil is, so the center of the eyelid. I'm not gonna do the whole eye because again, this is a we're gonna go for kind of a French nighttime look, which in America, is, <laughs> America is more of a daytime look. And then I'm gonna go right here. I have two different brows and eye shapes, and so I never can match my wing. So if you have trouble matching your wing, congratulations. You're in the same club. Okay, so that's pretty, it's pretty matchy. Pretty matchy. This side always goes a little bit higher than this side. But if you, I don't know why. I just have two different eyes and eyebrows. Okay, I love that. Love that. That's their felt pen. Okay, now um, let's have fun with these. Let's have fun with these little, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna take this light color and I'm gonna go right. See, look at the difference. Ooh, it's like a matte cream. Okay, tell me in comments what year it was when you when you ditched these and started using makeup brushes. For me, it was 1992. I was introduced to MAC Cosmetics. I mean, I even bought Chanel quads and used the little cotton, I mean, the little these. Um, but yeah even with Chanel. Okay, now I'm gonna go over the whole eyelid with this kind of shell color and kind of go, this is so fun. Using these again, see how I'm going on the inside of the eye and then I'm going into the crease. Oh, look at how nice and smooth that looks. This is fun. If you haven't used these in a while, and remember, we have different textures today than we did in the 80s and 90s. Eyeshadows back then were a little bit more grainy. The shimmers were a little bit more grainy as well, a little bit more sparkly. Okay, so my whole entire eye are these two. 
Now this is a shimmer. We're going to save that for the, the very end. Okay, now I'm going to take, again, I'm having so much fun with this. I'm going to take this really pretty medium brown. And I'm going to go along the lash line. I'm going to do the outer eyelid. And I'm taking it. This is so fun. I'm taking it into the crease. But I'm not really going to take it past the middle of the eye. See how that kind of stops in the middle? And then the tiniest trace under here. That is so pretty. Anyone can do this. Watch this. I'm taking it along the whole lash line because I don't want my whole eyelid to be super light. So I'm creating some drama outside of the eyelid and then into the crease. Now, if you have a hooded eye, when you look open, you're just going to put it higher than where your lash line is. Remember, I used to have a hooded eye before I got the upper bluff. If you're new here, I had my eyes done in February. Best decision ever. I wasn't even going to get my eyes done and the doctor talked me into it. He's like, you're going to be sorry if you don't get the eyes done. And you know what? I think he would have been right. Um, so now I have a crease, but what they don't tell you is that now I'm going to go back in with this shell color. and just kind of lightly blend the edges. What they don't tell you when you get your eyes done is that yes, they can take out excess skin. And I'm noticing this a lot in well-known celebrities who have had work done. They can take out excess skin, but what no one can do is as we get older, our or orbital bone is getting, it's expanding, it's getting bigger, and our eyeball itself is sinking back into our head. So even though I've, I don't have that excess skin anymore that's hanging on my lash line and I'm not as hooded, my eyes are still sinking in. It's so interesting. The whole psychology of plastic surgery is so, it, it's so interesting. And I'm telling you, I have a video coming soon, but I just need... I needed to get situated in Nashville before I talked to you about all my plastic surgery. Okay, so look, we have done my entire eye with just these applicators. I wasn't planning on doing this like this, but when I saw them in here, I thought, why not? And as long as you're going back in and like blending all the edges, look at how soft and pretty that looks. Okay, now we're going to take the darkest color on the other side, and I'm just doing the tip of it, and we're going to do what I call the Angelina Jolie, where we smoke it just over the eyeliner. I call this Angelina Jolie. Anytime someone's in my chair, I'm like, do you want an Angelina Jolie eye? And everyone has says, absolutely. No one has ever said, no, I don't really want that. I have used the Angelina Jolie reference probably 15 years. You want the Angelina Jolie eye? Everyone says, yes, please. Because she just kind of smokes that dark color in her outer eye. And even though she has professional makeup artists, she does her own makeup really well. She doesn't always use professionals. Oh my gosh, that is so pretty. Now with what's left on the applicator, I'm gonna take a little bit just in the outer corner just what's left on here. I'm not re-dipping, just whatever is left on here. I love it. I love it. 
Okay, now I'm gonna go in with a brush. Now I'm gonna take, ooh, I'm gonna take this little cute tiny blending brush. This is BK Beauty A504, I believe. It's from the Angie Hot and Flashy. I'm gonna go in with this medium brown And now I'm gonna lightly blend that darker color. This is where it helps to have a brush to blend those edges so it looks very airbrushed. I mean, anyone can pull this eye off. Anyone can do this eye, even if you're hooded. I love long comb. So getting back to long comb, I'll tell you something funny in a minute. There we go. Now we can take that shimmer and pop it right in the middle. Even the diagram here has it just popped right in the middle, especially on a mature eye. We don't want frost on the whole eye, but you can definitely pop it right in the middle. And it's so pretty. Okay, I could not love that more. I could not love that more. I'm also gonna take a little bit of that shell color sometimes it's easier to blend using these how fun have you seen anyone use applicators I don't know I never see people use applicators but I am I am not mad I'm gonna look close up yeah, this is super blended and pretty. And I just did my whole, but look, I'm messy under here. So this is exactly why I like to do eyes first. Okay, we're gonna take a little bit of my wall safe tape. Always get wall safe, because otherwise tape can stick to your under eye in a not good way. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, okay, I'm going to go and do the Lancome Lash Primer and Mascara. And I'm going to speed it up because I don't think it's all that interesting to watch someone put on mascara. That's just me. You might be thinking, wow, I love watching people put on mascara. Well, good. You, you'll go watch me do it in quicker time and I can do a little bit of a voiceover, but it just saves time. And I think we all know how to put mascara on. I'll be back. I've used this booster for probably 15 years, but it creates white lashes, but the more Sills booster you use, the less mascara you need. So I really take the time to build, lengthen, thicken the lashes in the booster stage. Then when I go to mascara, well, I just use less mascara, but do you see that? Oh my gosh, it's so long and thick. I love it. Remember, I like thick, long lashes. I like Tammy Faye Baker lashes. You might not like lashes this thick. Maybe you just don't need the booster, or maybe you put the booster on a little bit more natural, but this is the Hypnos Drama Mascara, and I think it might be my favorite. I like uh, Monsieur Big as well, but I think the Hypnos Drama might be my very favorite long comb. And this is why I do it off camera because look how long it takes me. Okay, if I was an American in Paris and I went out in the evening to a fran fancy French restaurant, I would not feel too American or too Kardashian. You know, this is just like, really it's just a little bit of shadow smoked in the outer eye and then beautiful lashes, but not even fake lashes. These are my own. And then like a nice eyebrow. Okay, guess what? It is time 
for one of my favorite foundations. I love this Taunty Doll Ultra Wear, but this is the glowy version. Now they make the regular version. I absolutely love this. I don't know if you've ever heard this story, but real quick, when I first moved to North Carolina, I, um, I'm gonna put this, I'm gonna apply this so I tell this story. I'm gonna start with one pump. When I first moved to North Carolina, I, um, I'm sorry, I get distracted. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna use this big fluffy brush by BK Beauty. It's an eyeshadow brush, but I'm gonna use it for foundation because it puts it on really, really pretty. Okay, so I moved to North Carolina. You know, I come from television and film and I immediately get onto the film directory here in North Carolina. And I get a call from someone who is doing um, a bank commercial here. And they hired me, which I was so thankful. And then the panic set in. It was like July 2nd in 2012. It was one of the hotter um, summers on record. I come from dry California heat. This is swampy, feels like you're living inside of a hot dog cart. It I just, I was like, oh my gosh, how am I going to keep these actors looking beautiful? It was a beauty commercial and it was a Super Bowl commercial. That was another thing. They were like, this has to look really good. This is a Super Bowl commercial. So I turned to my sister, what am I going to do? And she's like, oh my gosh, the Lancome Taunty Doll Ultra Wear is going to stay on. It's like, you know, it's like a long wearing 24 hour foundation come in and get it so I went in she worked at the Lancome counter in my local little town and she hooked me up she gave me like I don't know 10 or 12 different colors I had an Asian girl a Caucasian girl a deeper Italian guy a black guy a black woman all of them in their early early to mid um 20s okay so I'm doing their makeup I do the taunty doll even a little bit on the the men and we are whitewater rafting. We're at the whitewater rafting center. And it was so hot and everyone's getting splashed and the scene is over and I'm looking at everybody close up and I was like, wow, I didn't have to do any touch-ups. Okay, then, then came lunch, okay? And lunch was like big old sub sandwiches, which is not cute when you're an actor and you have to, you know, open your mouth real big and you're eating this big Subway sandwich and it's hard for the makeup artist because, you know, people rub all their makeup off all around their mouth. And so I was like, great. So, but it was a hot day. So I understand why we had sandwiches and not a hot lunch. So I go to touch everyone up after lunch before we go on to shooting our next scenes and the only thing I had to touch up was around the mouth. Everyone's makeup was absolutely beautiful. Back in 2012, I didn't really use primer on anyone. I always had Laura Mercier primer in my kit because I've used Laura Mercier primer since 2003, but I didn't use primer on anyone. I didn't use setting spray. It was just good old fashioned Lancome Taunty doll. It is such a pretty foundation. Look, I've only done one pump and I still have some left. Now this is when I like to go in and tap it around my nose where my pores are larger. And I also have a blemish right here. But when they came out with this glowy version, well, I knew that was for me because I like my foundation to look really glowy. Now this isn't matte necessarily. This is more of a natural velvet finish. It's not dry and matte, it's more velvety, but I like this glowy one better. Um, so there you go. And do you see how like I put it on lightly all over? I got a little more on my sunspot. I have a little discoloration down here on my jawline. But it's a very, very pretty foundation. 
And now we've got that priming serum under it. Now I've never used that priming serum before. So let's see how it looks close up. Cause from here it's very pretty. Oh gosh, this mirror is filthy. So anyway, since 2012, the Taunty doll has just been such a winner. Okay, very pretty. Very, very pretty, very glowy. I always looks best on my forehead because I don't have a lot of texture up here. My pores on my forehead are small. They're bigger around here. But this even looks really pretty. Now, I will tell you, if I check midday, and this is starting to look dry and cakey, I don't think it will, but if it is, you know what I'm going to do. I'm going to take one little drop of my B3 Prickly Pear, one drop, and do this and press it around the eyes and press it right through here and then we are good for the rest of the day but as of right now i don't need it this looks very very pretty okay now we're going to go in with the tiniest bit of concealer and let's see what color do i have i think i have 110 I have number 110. I don't know the name of it, but it's number 110. And watch how little I'm going to use. I'm going to use so little, you're not going to believe it. So I'm going to put some on the back of my hand. I'm going to take this teeny tiny little eyeshadow brush and I'm going to tap the tiniest bit. And then I'm only going to put it where I'm discolored. I'm not putting it everywhere. And remember in France, they don't wear a lot of concealer. They don't wear it heavy, I should say. I'm not saying they don't wear it. They don't wear it heavy. And they like their under eyes to have some color. So they don't put it all the way up to the lashes. And then I'm gonna go a little bit in the outer corner to lift that eye. Look at how lifting that is compared to this eye. This is more lifting because I just put it in that outer corner. And then just make sure you blend it. That is so pretty. Remember, I'm not putting much on here. Really not. And you know, if you're here, you know, I do not like concealer. I really don't love concealer because it, I feel like it makes my under eyes look very aging. But I'll tell you what, when you put it on real light, just like this, it's very glowy and pretty. I'm going to do the tiny, tiniest bit more on my nose right here because I have this weird little blemish that started. <laughs> Do you see how little I used? So little, like that was one dot on my, um, anytime I bang my nose, it makes my nose run. Okay. Really pretty. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it. And you know I love, you know, I love Charlotte Tilbury, number one in my pro kit. But this is my number one on myself. This is the Kelly Ray Surf Proof. You can always find it in my links, my shop, my looks. I put a lot on. Don't be shy. Don't be shy with it. I don't think I have Lancome setting powder. I don't think. Do you see that glow? Okay. Holy moly. Look at that glow. 
So I don't think I have Lancome powder. I have their dual finish, but I don't like powdered foundation on myself. So I'm gonna go in with the tiniest bit of the Mob Beauty. This is their talc-free blurring powder. And especially where I've got that little blemish, we don't wanna highlight that. And I just like powder. Now, I'm gonna do something that's gonna shock some of you. I'm gonna take the tiniest bit, the tiniest bit of powder, and I'm just gonna go, watch this, the tiniest bit, I'm just gonna go right where concealer creases. So on me, it's these little tiny lines here and my little tiny fine lines here. So we're going doot, 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 that's it. I'm not putting it all over the whole under eye. And I'm just taking trace amounts, watch this. That's it, okay? That's gonna keep it from creasing and I used very little powder and when I smile, it's not down here in my crinkles and my crow's feet. It's just where I notice concealer setting in the lines where they settle, okay? So there you go. Love this look. Now, let's do some blush. Um, let's see what, oh, this is pretty. Now this I'm not going to I'm not going to use this. I'm not going to use that. But I will use this beautiful little This feels like Nars orgasm to me, so if you've ever used Nars orgasm. Now if you watch French makeup artists or French actresses or you know anything like that, they wear blush lightly and naturally in the crease. They don't take it way high up like the Golden Girls. We're not Donna Mills from the 80s. You're gonna see a lot of young influencers say, take the blush high up because it lifts the face. It does, it does. If you take the blush high, it lifts, it looks like your face is lifted. However, it's also aging. So you look lifted but aged. You look old, it's more matronly looking. And so when you really look at top celebrities over 50 and the makeup artists who do their makeup, they keep it here in the apple. Now, some women say to me, well, I don't have an apple. That's okay. You're still, when you smile, you still have a cheek. So put it where the cheek is. Now I like a little bit on the nose, but that's just me. Okay, so pretty, so pretty. And you can even take your foundation brush. And if you ever feel like, uh oh, I got a little bit too much, you can always just whisk it over and kind of blend it all in. But I think that looks really, really pretty. Okay, now let's see what lipstick we're gonna use. Let's see what I got. I have, ooh, I have this beautiful red. That feels very French, doesn't it? And then I have this, ooh, this is fun. Ooh, that's pretty. Oh, I love the smell. I think I'm gonna do red. I like red year round. I love red in the fall. They sent me a bunch of juicy tubes too, but I'm not really feeling a glossy lip right now. I think I wanna do a red mouth. So what I like to do when I wear red, I actually don't usually wear I usually don't wear red lip pencil. So I'm gonna use this um, 
No, you know what I'm going to do? I'm not going to use that one. That's NYX. Um, that could run on me. I'm going to use the Anastasia. And this color is warm. It's called Caramel. It's a warm nude. Mm. Isn't that so pretty? All right, here we go. Red lips. I love red lips. Mm, what is this color? I have to put my glasses on. I can't even see it. Mm. <gasps> oh, so pretty. All right, let's see what this is. This is... Smoky Rouge. I don't know what to tell you. It just says Smoky Rouge. <laughs> it's very, very pretty. Oh my gosh, I love it. Okay, I'll be right back. Ooh, Monifique. I love it. I love it. I love it. Now, you know the trick if you wear red lips, right? Sorry, my stomach is always growling because I don't ever eat before I film. Okay. And I did contour my nose and I don't have a contour by Lancome. So this is um, the little milk sticks. I just didn't want to waste time on camera, but I was contour my nose. I don't contour my cheeks very much. Sometimes I'll contour my neck. Also, you notice I did not use bronzer for those of you that know how much I love bronzer, but it's okay because I, oh my gosh, I love I love this look. What do you think? Do you like this? Would you wear this? What do you think about this lip? This is a great red for fall because it has maybe, it's not that it has an earth tone, but maybe, I don't know, maybe it does have the slightest earth tone. It's just such a pretty red. I absolutely love it. And I love this blush because it doesn't look like I'm wearing a lot of blush. I just look really hy um, hydrated. Oops. What is this blush? Let's see what my, I didn't even tell you what the blush was. It is called Blushing Tresor. And it looks like NARS Orgasm. Blushing Tresor. Love it, love it, love this pen, love that pen. That was easy to use, easy, easy. Anyone can use that, anyone can use that. Um, to say that I'm crazy about the Sills Booster where it paints your lashes white before you put your mascara on. Where is my mascara? I don't see my mascara here. Oh, here it is. I did Hypnos Drama. It's my favorite. The Hypnos Drama is my favorite. Anyway, I feel très chic, and I can't believe I did my whole eyes with sponge applicators. Mm, I love this look. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this, and Thank you so much, everyone, for praying that my house sells. I will keep you posted on that. I do have a video coming soon on my six-month um, update on my lower facelift, lower face, neck, and upper eyes. I have a lot to say about that. Um, my surgeon wants me to do CO2 laser this fall, and I'm not sure. I was gung-ho about it. It was part of the plan. We talked about it a year ago. We talked about CO2 laser even before my surgery, that it was part, it was like a two-parter to get my face and skin to where I wanted. And I don't know, I just, 
I don't know how I feel. I'll tell you all about it in the video. It will be coming soon, maybe the end of September when I'm too busy to do makeup and I'll just talk to you real quick about my plastic surgery because I really do want to help educate women. It's a big decision and it's not for everyone and it is very, very costly. And guess what? We're not really rewinding the clock. We're not. Spoiler alert. We are doing a little pickup on aisle five, but we are not re rewinding the clock. And so there's a lot of psychology that goes into cosmetic surgery. And I'm going to talk about it. All right. Thanks for being here. God loves you. So do I. And aloha and mahalo.